What is up YouTube and welcome back to another video here on the channel. Today's video is one that I'm extremely excited about because I believe that it will be able to help out a whole lot of you. So the topic of today's video is going to be active versus passive progression. So an active progression is where you increase the stress to get stronger. Passive progression is the opposite side around where you get stronger and then earn the right to increase the stress. So to give you an example, over here you're always trying to turn up the dial either the intensity through weight or the volume through reps and set. You don't really care about or you don't care about actually at all how you performed the week before, even if you're were fucking dying the week before and blood were dripping out your throat. You tried to increase by two and a half kg the next week because well you completed the sets and reps. So to give an example here like I've written here, we can you might do five five reps at 100 kg which felt like an RP9. Then the next week you add two and a half kg and you do five reps again at RP9.5, the third week you do, you only get 4 reps with 105 kg, so the thing that I don't really like much about active progression, and it's not to say that you should never use active progression, but it is that you don't really have a clear way to say that, alright, I've actually become stronger now because, yes, you went from 5 to 100 and then Maybe, maybe, let's say you even completed 5 or 105, but it was like total RB10, the last reps, like, you totally got destroyed, your form went to absolute shit. Do you know if you've actually become stronger or you just, is it just that you grind it harder? Could you be able to do 5 reps at 100 kg below RB9 now? There's no way to know that. When we're using passive progression, we know for sure that we have become stronger because we do the same amount of work until it feels easier and then we add weight or reps or another set to increase the stress again. So let's say you get the 5 reps 100 kg again, instead of increasing weight you just try to do it at an easier um, MPE, so maybe the next week again was RB9, then on the third week it felt like an RB8, then you increase the weight knowing that now you are definitely stronger, able to do one more rep with 100 kg. So over here, what well, you can say that performance dictates how much stress you are going to add, if you are going to add any stress, and you might have weeks that are harder than before, which is fine, like everyone is going to fluctuate a little bit in performance from day to day, week to week, stuff like that, depending on a lot of variables that I'll talk about on here at some point. But the thing is, like over here you're not always going to be training, just like trying to kill yourself. And I think this one is, for a lot of people, this would make more sense to use. But the reason I think I don't see many people use it, use it is because it is not as sexy. Using the same weight for four, five, six trainings in a row is not sexy. Everyone wants to add weight constantly or add another rep, stuff like that, and not just repeat the same thing. Even though this is easier to say that I'm actually getting stronger over here because you're doing the same kind of weight, you're getting comfortable with it and it is becoming easier. When something becomes easier, you can say that, all right, I'm definitely better now. But a lot of people just go into the gym, just with the pure um, desire to just destroy themselves and train hard, and that is why they don't use this thing. So to give you a couple of examples, I already talked about leader progression here. Essentially, you, you add weight to the lift for these small, Increase, increases in weight week after week after week after week and essentially you just run into this brick wall and you crash and explode um, and then we have 
where progression would be basically linear progression again. But this time we have small, small baby steps in between. So you're doing these works where you make like five sets of four, then three sets, then one set of four. Then you repeat that again with a little bit more weight until you again run into this brick wall and crashes and explodes. Then we have step loading. So step loading is um, essentially like double progression, but it's this is more for your going to be your compound movement. So you're not going to be starting close to failure, which as you mentioned, you also shouldn't do in double progression. But here you make sure you can do these jumps. But eventually, obviously, it's going to become harder. So you do you have maybe three weeks where where you are using a. Um, 100 kg, you're doing another rep every week. Again, it doesn't matter if, like, like this right here could be harder than this and then harder again. You're not waiting for this to become easier before you increase the reps, just as you would, as you would do over here. You increase the reps or the sets or whatever with no care about how you perform. You, you only care about just doing more and more and more and trusting that by doing so, you're actually becoming stronger. So, then we have, last we have periodized or linear periodization here, and it is essentially just using blocks with different, on, with focus on different qualities. So it could be having a block of like four or five weeks where you're doing sets of eight, then four or five weeks where you do sets of five, and then trees in the end. And this is essentially what you'll see a lot of powerlifters do, where they have this type of, type of program where the first week they do five reps at RB6, next week RB7, third week RB8, and fourth week RB9. And even though they are accounting for RBE, which is basically what you're doing over here, this is not really like a um, passive progression because. Let's say you start in this block of five down at like 75%, you have like four or five reps in reserve, and you end it with a set of five at around like 88 90%, somewhere around that. You, yes, you are like, you have used as the E, but, and you and you are now doing like hard centers and stuff like that. But how do you know that? you didn't have the ability to also complete it and at the same RPE down there in the first week. You don't. Like, you haven't, tr you haven't tested it like that week and then four weeks later. You just assume that by using this type of programming, you're going to become stronger. The only thing I have to compare to is if you have run this exact block before, which you maybe have, maybe have not. If you have, then, then good for you. Now you can track and know that you, if you do a heavier set of five than you have done before, you have become stronger compared to the last block. But there's no way to say that you have become, you are actually stronger within these individual blocks because you can't compare to what you have done before. The only way to know that you have become stronger is to be able to do the same amount of work easier or be able to do it, do more work at the same exertion, which is what brings us to brings us to passive progression. So again, we have step loading here, but now we are accounting for RBE. So we have five weeks here in, instead of now just increasing the the um, reps every single time or increasing the load constantly. We are now in. Um, we are now actually using the, you can see here for week one, you're doing five sets at, five reps at RP8 with 100 kg. You're doing the same in week two. In week three, you finally have three reps in the bank. So it feels like RP7. In the fourth week, it feels like RP6. So in the fifth week, you increase to 105 kg, knowing that you have gotten stronger and earned the right to make this increase in strength. So that is essentially what makes a difference. Then we have flat loading, which is 
very similar to um, to linear uh, or to step loading. And this is essentially what we are doing down here, where you are increasing the rest. So you can see now you are using 100 kg for all of these weeks. So you are doing 5 reps at RP8. And next week you do 5 reps at RP8 again. The third week you do 5 reps at RP7. The fourth week you do 6 reps at RP8 because the third week it became easier so you know you can now do 6 reps at RP8 without killing yourself basically. And then whenever it becomes RP7 you add more reps. Then when you get, say when you get to 7 reps, you increase the weight like you would do down here with step loading. But the difference is, as I talked about, that here when you increase the reps, it's not because that it has become easier. That this one has become easier, so now you increase the number of reps. It's just because you trust that by by doing part of by work, by increasing the stress, by going close to failure, you trust that you are becoming stronger. But here you don't know that you become stronger. Here you know for certain that you are now you are actually stronger. But it's just not as sexy working with them with constantly. And I understand why you guys maybe don't want to do that, but I'm telling you. This is, is extremely valuable information to take with you and use in your own programming. Last we have West Side. So West Side is a is an um, is a program that is focused on increasing the one rep max in powerlifting, and they have these days that are focused on dynamic effort, moving light weights as fast as possible, and then they have the max effort days that are focused on producing maximum amount of force where, where, where make weight moves slow but never failing the way so you're going up to at RB9 or 10 single and calling it a day and the way they allow you to do that every single week after week is by rotating the max effort variations so in the first week you might do a one rep at RB10 in the safety squat then you change to front squat, then box squat, and then press squat. So you're always changing something to not always put the stress on the exact same structures. And that is how you are able to get around the fatigue that is usually created when training extremely heavy for multiple weeks in a row without deloading. And again here, you're training at RB10, but what dictates how much weight you're going to be using is the performance that you are um, putting in. Like if you are feeling good, you might be able to use more weight in one day. If you're feeling bad, you might be able to use less weight than you have done before. But that's totally fine. We just have you increase the weight whenever it feels easier. So whenever and I be ten is more weight, you do you use more weight. Not if you don't try to just do more if um, if it doesn't feel easier. So this is essentially what yeah active and passive passive vision is about. Now I'll just um, I have another part that was, I'll show you when I show um, why I personally believe um are the, why what I believe are the benefits of um passive progression or active progression which we will talk about now. There are two big reasons why I believe passive progression is superior to active progression. And the first one is, you know you became stronger. And the second one is, you never fail. So, I already talked about these two, but just to make it a little bit clearer. Here we have like, what I believe is like, total normal, like linear periodization. The Western style periodization that we see from the US where you are just starting with high volume and low percentages and you are slowly building up and this is the form of active progression I think can really um, be depressing because if you get to the end and then you fail have you just wasted these like 8-10 weeks so you see that the green lines here they represent like easy work so the first week you're doing 5% of 10 and 
it is really easy to do forces of Canada 65, it's still really easy. Four sets of A of 70%, three sets of seven at 75%, and four sets of, of six reps at 80% is still very, very easy for you. Then you get into this with the blue lines that is a little bit difficult. Now four sets of five to 85%, and then four sets of four with 90% is still a little bit difficult. But you're not failing yet, it's starting to become really difficult. But then you get to here, three sets of three with 95% and you actually fail. So we have put out this whole progression, this really nicely set up program with the anticipation that the increases in stress is going to make you stronger. You don't know if it is, but you, you think you know yourself well enough to know that. But doing this is something I can recall from and get stronger from. So hopefully I can hit a new one with max at 105%. But if you already fail here, it's into, essentially you have used like seven weeks before that and they might just be useless. And I know for myself, I've run these kind of programs before and it can be extremely depressing when it doesn't work out. Now if you look instead at the step loading with passive progression over here, it is going to be sets of three all the way through. So we have 12 weeks here again. So you see this right here is like 10 weeks. Over here you have 12 weeks. So you're working with the same weight constantly. And that is what is for a lot of people just throws them away from this because when they're doing this, they always feel like they're doing something new constantly, which and are, are making some kind of progression. But as you can see, you fail here, as I just said, you're actually not making any type of progression. So if you do three sets at RP8, then three reps at RP8, then three reps at RP7, and RP7 after that, and then RP6, and you increase the weight. And now you're doing, in week five, just four weeks later, you're doing three sets at RP8 with 5 kg more than in the first week. Now you know that you have gotten stronger. But a lot of people, especially if they have like weeks back to back, they feel the same, they're doing the exact same, they aren't feeling easier. They'll instantly just think that something is wrong. But they'll not be thinking that over here, like because they're just doing something new and it's not something they've done before, they think that, all right, so this is gonna drive my progress. But what drives your progress is going to be the exposure to the weight, not always in increasing the effort. So you might have a, a day also where it feels sometimes going to feel a little bit easier. So you can see here you're doing three reps at RP8, 105, then the next week three reps at RP7, and, and then the week after that it actually feels like an RP8 again. But these fluctuations in, fluctuations in performance are going to come. It's like you, it might just be the case that you didn't sleep enough, you didn't have enough water or something else meant that your performance was off by just a couple percentages and that is how it is sometimes. You can see then the next week again it's down to RP7 and the week after that RP6 so now you increase the RP chin. Now you are increasing your strength by 10 kg and you don't know that for sure because you're doing the same amount of reps and you're working at the same RPE so that you know for sure that you have become stronger. So that is the main thing, like the one thing I want to take away from this video. Use passive progression more because it'll be a guarantee that you will become stronger. You're never going to fail because even if you have a bad day here, you're not failing. When you, but when you get over here in the red zone, start to fail away and you get depressed and stuff like that. This might seem a little bit boring working with the same weight for a long time but if you have a plan if you're serious about the training there's a lot of the things like you'll see like West Side do a lot of Russian stuff it's just based off on this, this passive, passive progression model where they're not trying to just get strong in three months but where they get, let it take years where they're working in four year cycles and sometimes you might not see progress for a couple of weeks but then you see a breakthrough and 
it's all gonna add up slowly over time. Doesn't mean that if you're not seeing progress and you're just working with the same weight for five weeks, that it's just weighted, wasted. You're still gonna be adding something and there's still gonna be something going on. Maybe you're noticing slight improvements, but it's not like you could do one more rep yet, but it's coming there week after week. So, so this is all for this video. In the third video for the How to Get Brutally Strong series. If you're liking this series, please guys, leave a like, share with a friend, whoever you think could use this. If you have someone that is tall with appropriate needs to try something new, well, they're not going to end up depressed because they're on into a wall and they have not actually become stronger in the 12 weeks that they've done, which I thought they would tell them about this. And remember, please guys, to subscribe to the channel, and we get to 1,000 subscribers so you can get a free hands and push-up push program. My name is Andreas and I'm out. Bye.